And before we even get started, right quick, this is pre-anticipation of Ja getting hurt. I watched this live, so I didn't even know if Ja got hurt. I was anticipating this matchup with Ja being in a lineup. Now, this is one thing going into this series that I really wanted to see. is Ja taking on AD at the rim and in the paint. Because he's played some good rim protectors. He's played like Rudy Gobert's, and he's played like some good defenders like the Warriors last year. But rim protector, paint protector, AD is probably the best in the league when healthy. Mm. Now, boom, right here. AD is going to get his ISOs, his mid posts, his post ups. But if you're going to show the second player, you've got to make sure you show hands. Like you're, as if you're playing a zone, too. Because, Pete, this right here. You got Tillman, you got Jaron Jackson stepping over, but nobody's showing their hands. By showing hands, you're going to be able to close up some of these lanes, discourage some of those passes, but nobody has hands. Mm. Hey. Now, Austin Reeves, you could check the receipts. I said this before the playoffs even came around. The fact that Austin Reeves is able to draw fouls, it's perfect for the playoffs because by drawing fouls in the course of a playoff game where one bucket, one layup can help you build momentum to get a run, you get that foul, you dead the whole run. That whole run is done. The momentum is done. The crowd is back to neutral level just by getting that foul. Since Austin Reeves is able to get these fouls, he ends those runs super quick because basketball is a game of runs. If you can limit as many runs as you can, you put yourself in a great position to win games. And then Braun, this Jaron Jackson matchup is better than Braun guarding a perimeter player. But what Braun has to do, though, playing in this post, he's giving the effort. He's fighting. He's bumping. But it's the discipline, though, that's really been tricking him. Because he gets himself in a good spot to wall up and not reach for that ball, but he ends up reaching for that ball and trying to make a play on it. Boom. Forget the ball. Wall up. And then another one. He's bumping, taking on those hits. Then he tries to go around and get that steal. Then he gets right to his right. Now, Jaron Jackson likes to go left, and that's what they're taking away. But it doesn't change the fact that he's a dominant right-hand player. He shoots with his right hand. So regardless, even if you set him that way, it's not like he's just going to straight up smoke it. Now, boom, right there. Those AD contests in the paint is something different. Because on top of the fact that he's going to see you at the top, he's going to contest it clean. Mm. Now, I love this take right here by D'Lo because it was super timely. He, he started the game off missing some jumpers. Even tracing back to that playing game, he was missing shots. And he came into this, missed his first, like, three jump shots. Then he was like, okay, I'm not sure taking a jumper anymore. I'm getting to the paint, getting my lay. After he got that lay, then you see him knock down some jump shots. The AD defensively, though, was holding down that paint. Not even on job, but on anybody. And for Aldamba to think, I'm going to get this ball off offensive rebound and attack Anthony Davis, who's sitting in the paint and has three blocks in this first quarter alone, nigga, you's just goofy. And by the way, make sure you subscribe, like, and turn on notifications because we drop breakdown videos daily. And if you want to catch my breakdowns live, make sure you go hit that link in the description, go follow, and let's get right back to it. It's just goofy, bro. Now, this is why I hate about these Lakers ISOs right here. This is what I hated. All right? Because they got somebody in the post, whether it was Braun, whether it was AD, and they had absolutely no movement at all. You have this screen going on this weak side, but at the same time, you got three dudes standing here like it's a watch party. They just sitting there just watching the ball, not cutting, not relocating, nothing. They just standing there watching, which makes it even easier for the defense to guard because they don't really have to worry about anybody else because they already know where they are. You really get the defense confused when you move. And so, even this right here, you don't even got to do too much. Somebody just got to cut. Hey, Pete Braun. Pete Braun, man. Now, we probably all seen this first by Rondo, but really, in general, what's the problem if you do this? Why not see your opponent go talk to their coach and go right next to him? You ain't going to get no tech, ain't no foul. You just now figuring out what he's telling to him because he's not going to tell him the wrong thing. He's not telling him what he has to say. And if you can hear him, you could be a step ahead and even make that chess move. Now, that turnover was Braun's fault. You've got to understand your teammates' tactics. So, Braun's diving, and he's automatically thinking that he's just going to be sitting in that corner. But really, he's not sitting in that corner. Jared Vanderbilt doesn't sit in spacing and, and play to the defense's game by taking these jump shots. What he does is that instead of sitting there, he's going to cut right behind the defense and get a layup or get a dunk at the rim. Something in the paint. 
So Braun has to realize and actually go up into this and make the read and not just assume because you got Jared Vanderbilt because he does this every single time. This is his tendency. You're going to get a much better shot by Vanderbilt on this cut than you would if Vanderbilt sat in this corner all because it's the correct spacing. Mm, Reeves with the steal. Hey, Reeves was working on defense though. Reeves was chasing Desmond Bain like a dumb dog chasing his tail. Peep this right here though. You can never go wrong with having active hands. You're recovering, just throw your hands up somewhere in the lanes at which the ball may go. Because Reeves does not see this ball at all. Peep. He turns his head and just throws his hands up in the air because he sees it throwing that pass up high. Just throw it in the air. Got, some, got his hands on it. Now, Rui, though, you see, I showed you that other play where they had absolutely no movement. Ruby tried to be here and make this cut. But what Ruby did, what was wrong, though, is that he hesitated to go make this cut. He hesitated, peep. He kind of waited until AD faced up to go and make that cut. But by waiting for AD to face up, you allow the defense to also have more time to realize that you may cut into the paint and make a play. He just got to cut when he, as soon as he sees the opportunity to do so. So right there, you go cut. Even if AD doesn't see you, that's on AD because he wasn't looking up. AD's verticality, bro. He's the best big when it comes to stepping over on help to be able to jump up and actually be vertical and avoid the foul. You see a lot of bigs and a lot of players in general come over on this help and they're jumping into their body, whereas AD, he's kind of meeting them, showing his hands, keeping them straight up the whole time, not collapsing them at all, and avoiding the foul completely. Then Austin Reeves, bro, this pick and roll, this pick and roll, his pace and his poise is just, it's something that I even said before, that it's just something super hard to guard. It's like almost like Luka, where their pace and the way they play out these pick and rolls and the way they make their reads, you can't really guard it. With AD in that pick and roll too, that, like that's just tough. Hmm, AD was mad on that. Little, little communication. Now, a lot of people will take these situations right here personal. They'll say, oh, my teammate's yelling at me, he's mad at me. And then he yells back and tries to always think that they're right. But when you communicate with your teammates, you're communicating to solve a problem. So if somebody has something they need to say and then you're saying something back, you need to find a resolution to that problem instead of bickering back and forth, always thinking you're right. So... This, this is an example of healthy communication. You see AD get upset up here, probably with Troy Brown switch, switching on the jaw because this you didn't need to switch this necessarily. Dennis Schroeder could have stayed there. Are there something I don't know? But I'm just telling you how I see it. But then boom, Schroeder, the AD. Then now he's talking to Schroeder. And then Schroeder walks away, nods his head, is like, okay, okay. Whatever that communication was, you reached our resolution. Now you understand. Now you can progress into that game with no animosity between each other and no gaps to be had on another play that may be just like this. And then Rui, bro. Rui. Austin Reeves closed the game out, but in the middle of that game and even till that fourth quarter, Rui Hachimura was really the savior of this game. Ridiculous. Got hot from three. Keep playing with him. That was the fourth one he hit in a row. And they still ain't guard up. You still sitting help? You still sitting on the nail? You fucked up. Come on. Probably thought he was in the cold after that third. And it's not like he was just there playing offense and shooting threes. He also did a great job on Jared Jackson Jr. Jared Jackson still had like 30, 30 plus or like 32, 33. But in terms of on-ball defense, he did damn near the best that you could do. In terms of staying in front, giving a hand, just playing to your game plan. And then ending up with Jared Jackson taking the shots that you'll live with. And then boom, this year too. Braun was also playing great defense too. Braun came over and played great defense, especially off the ball. That's where he's really excelling defensively. All right, playing the game in layers. That was nasty. That poster was nasty, but now Rui is playing the game in layers. Knocked down, what, four to five threes at this point? And so the next time he gets a spot-up opportunity, pump fake. Jaron Jackson closes out hard. He rips and attacks. One dribble on his head top. And now Reeves. This is big time. You down three, fourth quarter, 830. And like I said before, he's drawing these fouls. You hear the crowd going, defense, defense. He gets his foul, shuts that shit down. Listen, crowd is already going. Crowd's going. Listen, 
Ah, uh, everybody clapped. Now they're about to go sit down. Because he could draw that foul. And now they quiet. Knocks them both down. Ends that run completely. That's the one part that Austin Reeves brings into playoff games. And games in general, regardless if it's regular season or playoffs, that people just overlook. And I've been said this. You can go watch my Austin Reeves videos. You can go check the receipts too. I'm telling you, big time right here, man. Another ISO mismatch. But peep the shot clock, though. Late shot clock. Grizzlies messed up. They panicked. Rui, post up. Five seconds on the shot clock. Somebody's got to be aware of this. Somebody on the court's got to be aware. So that you can just let Ja be here and just play him straight up and let him shoot a shot over the top. Because if he shoots that shot with two seconds and he knocks it down, you will live with that. But what you won't live with is what happened exactly right here. You send this double when there's only three seconds. And then he finds the open Reeves because since you doubled, your off-ball defenders also have to pinch in to cover that paint before you go cover that three. Austin Reeves gets a clean look from three and knocks it down. And then, boom, this is two things. I want to say two things about this player right here, all right? Before we get to that, the, the jaw hand shit, AD being able to go from one place saying, okay, I'm going to go up vertical and I'm going to contest this, to going to the next one and saying, I'm not going to jump. I'm going to go take a charge. That defensive instinct for him to be able to do that is ridiculous, bro. I seen this and I jumped out my seat. I jumped out my seat. I was like, what the fuck? Like, the way to be able to move between the two, because all game you've been going straight up. So now Jaw is going to attack and he's going to try to get up over the top of you, but boom, chest move, charge, GG's. And then boom. That's why I was like, okay, Lakers may just run away with this. They called a timeout. And now I was like, damn, the Lakers may take their foot off the gas, though, because Jaron Jackson came back, got some buckets. Boom. First one, right after the timeout. Peep the defense by LA, though. So you want to force Jaron Jackson to his right, of course. But are you going to force him to the right away from the double team? Or are you still going to force him left towards the double team? Because if he gets right, he doesn't see Braun, and it's just a shot over the top of Jared Vanderbilt. Whereas you still force him left, and you force him into a tight trap. He can't shoot that. He's going to have to pass out of that. Hmm. Bro, that. Man. <laughs> Probably see Pete Rui is like, damn, Rui's going crazy. That pass, though, by Austin Reeves, though. Come on now. Come on now, bro. Straight downhill, sees two behind the back. I've been saying this too. You can check the receipts, my guy. Check my Austin Reeves videos and see what I said about Austin Reeves. What's something that people overlook? It's his passing. I said I've been said this. Boom, behind the back dime to Rui Hachimura. Knocks another one down. It's light work at that point for Rui. Now, boom, once again. <laughs> the navigation. Peep this, peep this. Boom. Rescreen. Underneath the hand of Jaron Jackson that swipes down and he's damn near as low as he could get You told Jaron Jackson to get any lower. He's probably gonna fall over his ass hitting the float But Austin Reeves keeps that ball so low manipulates it finds his gaps and then gets himself to the rim Which is ridiculous ball control and pace and just poise in general Then boom Braun gets the board And then he gives it up to Austin Reeves he Come on now Come on now, buddy is cooking. I'm telling you, his play style, I've been saying this like oh, I've been saying this whole video. I've been said this before too. His play style is just something that just can't really be game plan for you. Boom. What are you doing, Jaron Jackson? Jaron Jackson fell asleep. Thought he had a drop. Desmond Bain thought he had a switch. These little miscommunications could cost you the game. Reeves is getting that bag. Come on, man. Stop playing, my guy, bro. Stop playing with him, bro. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's stuff that already done broke down before. The same thing like before. Pace, navigation, ball control. Those little things right there. Gets himself right through that gap, bro. I'm telling you. No problem, bro. And at that point, he's just GG's down, down 10 right now. Now you're just trying to find something. You find nothing, though. AD gets, another, gets a steal. AD ain't have a great offensive game. He left that up to Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura. But what he did do, as we've seen, protect that paint and play some defense. Showing you why he just might be the best defensive player in the NBA.